Welcome to Torah Sparks. This is the week in which we read Parsha's Bow, the Parsha that deals with the last moments of the Jewish people in Mitzrayim, in Egypt, and their eventual departure, the Exodus. So this is a incredibly relevant Parsha to our situation in these last moments of exile, as we prepare ourselves to leave exile once and for all and enter into the world of Geula Shleimah, complete redemption through Mashiach. One of the details that the Torah relates was that the Jewish people were told, and they complied with what they were told, to put and sprinkle blood on the doorposts of their homes. This is something that serves as the basis for the mitzvah of mezuzah. Mezuzah means doorpost. So there's a connection between the exodus from Egypt and the mezuzah that we have on our doorposts. And Nachmanides says that the mezuzah is the symbol of freedom. The question is, in what way is the mezuzah a symbol of freedom? It doesn't mention anything about the exodus. But it seems that the fact that we put the mezuzah on our doorposts itself is an indication that we are dealing with something that deals with liberation and freedom. And to understand that, let me just preface a statement in the Jerusalem Talmud concerning a Evid Ivri, a Hebrew servant, someone who is an indentured servant because he had stolen and he couldn't make restitution. So he would be sold into a limited form of slavery. It's not really slavery, but it's indentured servitude. And at the end of six years, he would go free. But if he says, I want to stay here, I like the life of a servant, the Torah requires boring a hole through his ear into the doorpost. And the Jerusalem Talmud says that the reason for that punishment, you could say, is because the doorpost, the door, is the symbol of freedom. Because the Jewish people left Egypt through the door, which simply means that the The thing that we did in order to get out of Egypt was to sprinkle blood on our doors. So we have the servant who defies, is not interested in freedom. He has to be reminded that the Jewish people are a free people. That freedom is not just a nice thing, a good thing. It's an imperative. A Jew is not supposed to look for other masters because we have only one master. And that's the true definition of freedom. But the question is, why is such such an emphasis on the door? What does the door signify? Now, the word in Hebrew for door, delos, is related to another Hebrew word, which means dalus, poverty. Now, delos, on one hand, the Jerusalem Talmud says, is a symbol of freedom. And on the other hand, the very translation of the word delus, dalus, is poverty. And poverty is not freedom. In fact, the Talmud quotes the biblical verse that says, Evid lova li ishmalva, that the poor man who has to borrow money is like a servant. He's indebted. Poor people are always indebted to those who help them. So how do we reconcile the idea of the door being a symbol of freedom and the door being a symbol of poverty, which seem to be contradictory themes. Now, the truth is that the word, the root word, delus, dalus means poverty, but it also comes from another word, dilisani, I have lifted him. It means lifting up. So the same word, here we have this paradox, means both freedom, being uplifted, taken out of poverty, and it means poverty. So to understand that, we have to... First preface, the Hasidic analysis of the delus, the door. The door is a paradoxical instrument. On one hand, a door is used to close the entrance. And then the door is open to allow traffic to and fro. Hasidic literature tells us that the divine attribute of Malchus, God's sovereignty, is also associated with God's speech with which he created the world. And our speech, our power of speech, 
is a reflection of the divine power of speech. Speech is both very rich and very poor. Speech is sometimes compared to the moon. The moon has no light of its own. It only can reflect the sunlight. Speech on its own is like scratches on a piece of paper or mechanical sounds that we make with our vocal cords. It has no depth to it. It's just sounds or signs. But if you put meaning into the speech, speech could reflect the deepest ideas and the most precious emotional sentiments. That's the definition of a door. A door is that which allows something to be closed. It doesn't allow anything to enter. Someone who is poor, and speech is also very rich, filled with, pregnant with meaning and depth. That is the significance of the door. And that's how it ties in with the Exodus from Egypt. The great capitalist, the Arizal, said that the word for Passover is Pesach. We all know what Pesach means. It means passing over. But he said Pesach can also be viewed as a composite of two words. Pe, Sach. Pe is a mouth. Sach is a speaking mouth. What does that mean? That when the Jews were in Egypt, their slavery was not just physical back-breaking work, that too, of course, but it was also the slavery of speech. Their speech was in prison. Their speech was not free. And the liberation, the exodus from Egypt, meant that their mouths, peh, sach, began to speak. What does this mean? Speech is what distinguishes a human being from all other creatures. In fact, when whenever we talk about the four levels of existence, the uh, still things, the silent things, some people would refer to them as inanimate, like a rock. Then there's vegetation. Then there's animal life. Human life is not called intellectual life. It's called midaber, a speaker, a communicator. When a person has a problem communicating, that means that they are separated from the rest of society. They have no way of relating to others because speech is the way through which we connect to others. So in a certain sense, they are in a prison. They are in their own cocoon, and they have no real way of connecting to the outside. That's a very painful thing. It's like putting a person in prison. What is the worst thing about prison? That you cannot do what you were created to do. And that's why prison is not mentioned in the Torah as one of the punishments for one's criminal behavior because it takes away your ability to express yourself without which you can't really contribute to the society. But there's another thing about a person who is in a prison of speech who cannot communicate. Very often the reason why people can't communicate, their speech is locked up, is because they're not even in touch with themselves. They themselves don't know what they are, who they are, what they represent, what their purpose in life is. They're not in touch with their own identities. That is the ultimate prison when you don't even know who you are yourself. Well, if you don't know who you are yourself, you can't express yourself to others. Speech, our sages tell us, is the pen of the heart. It's what expresses our feelings. But if you don't have speech, that means that you don't even have feelings in a way that gives you some meaning in your life because you don't know who you are and what you represent. So when we talk about the Jewish people sprinkling the blood on the doorposts, the doorposts that had doors, the idea was that in, in order to get out of exile, a person has to have the capability of having that door, having the power of speech with which to connect to others and with which to connect to oneself as well. And that explains why the idea of a door is related to freedom because the only way a person is truly free is if the person can relate to others and if the person could relate to himself or herself. And that explains also the power of the mitzvah of mezuzah and the reason why the mezuzah is associated with redemption, even though it doesn't really contain the words of redemption as the tefillin do, it's because the mezuzah 
is placed on the doorpost. And according to Rambam, Maimonides, the only doors that need a mezuzah are the doors that, the entrances that have doors. Now, not everyone agrees with Maimonides, so we put a mezuzah on every doorpost in our homes, except for a bathroom or other rooms of that nature, because we want to satisfy all the opinions. But whenever we put a mezuzah on a door, the entrance, it doesn't have a door, we do not recite the blessing since there's a question whether we need to put the mezuzah there. But one thing is clear, that if the entrance has a door, everyone agrees that that entrance requires a mezuzah. And so we see that there's a special connection between the mezuzah and the door, because the door is the symbol of both poverty, but also of freedom, getting out of that poverty, allowing the speech to be laden with meaning, pregnant with depth and spirituality that frees us from our own internal exile, our own internal prison. So whenever we put our hands on the mezuzah or see the mezuzah as we enter into a home, enter from one room into another, the mezuzah reminds us of the power of speech that we have and that the speech should be a speech that expresses the ideas that are contained in the mezuzah, the unity of God. And whenever we express that unity of God, and we're reminded of it by the mezuzah, we experience true freedom, and we're able to get out of our own gullus, our own internal exile. And ultimately, very soon, imminently, we will greet Mashiach as free people, Pesach, whose mouths are open and capable of expressing themselves fully.